Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana. I am an acrylic artist and I am so glad that you stopped by to paint with me today. We're going to be painting a cute little gnome today. Let's take a look at him. Oh my gosh, isn't he just the cutest? I've titled this piece, To Know Me Is To Love Me. And um, I just had so much fun creating him. He's on uh, arched plaque, which you can find on my website, uh, lanalam.com. But look, he's got his holes in his jeans. He's got his Converse shoes on, sunglasses. He is just the most adorable little guy sitting in that field of daisies. I had so much fun creating him. I hope that you will too. We're going to be using Deco Art Americana acrylic paints on this. So let's grab our supplies and let's get painting. Okay. Um, I've got my surface prepped, partly prepped for this uh, design. So I've applied my multi-purpose sealer with a damp artist sponge. And this is a, um, a surface that you can find on my website, lamalam.com. Um, it's my arched plaque. And I've got warm white shoreline. Uh, primary yellow and leaf green those are the colors we're using and I'm going to start with some warm white up here at the top so I've just loaded my sponge with some warm white and I just want to get that up here and now I'm going to go into some of my shoreline and apply it and let it come up and blend a little bit with that white kind of scrub it in there and then streak it across and now I want just shoreline mostly for the rest of the sky part I need to put a little bit of water on my palette my sponge doesn't quite feel real damp so I'll put some water on there so I can grab some moisture Some more blue and down here and I've just divided my canvas um, I've come up about a third of the way with the, the grass so I've got my sky now pretty pretty done so I want to go to the other side of the sponge and grab some yellow and some leaf green if a little blue mixes in there that's okay and I want to start with the Oops, I'm going to try and keep my hand out of that paint up there. The yellow part. And create a horizon line that doesn't need to be perfect. And then I want more green, just leaf green down here. Lay this down so I can stop sticking my hand in it as I paint. Because right there I got my hand print in it. I'm not really sure what that stuff is. It must be some dried paint on my sponge. I'm going to flip my sponge over and turn this around. Oop, I don't want green in my sky, so tap that out of there. I'm just going to try and clean up the places where I um, got my fingerprints in the sky. So that's going to be our background right there, and um, we're going to add a few clouds in the sky as soon as this dries, and some distant looking trees, but um, this is just getting the background ready. So let's get it dry completely. Grab your favorite brush that you like to use to make clouds, and uh, we're going to add some clouds in the sky. Let's add some clouds in here. Um, I'm going to be using one of these domed brushes to put mine in, but I want you to use whatever brush you feel comfortable using. I'm going to use it dry because I want my clouds to be a little bit more on the lighter side. And um, these are just a couple of different dome dynasty brushes that I have. And I'm going to use the smaller one here. And I'm going to load my brush with some warm white. And then I'm going to offload a little bit. And I'm just going to scumble in some clouds. 
And clouds can be any shape, any brightness or darkness. And I must have a little bit of gray in my brush, which is okay. Apparently I didn't clean it last time I used it. I'll try and get that out. I don't want my clouds to be all gray clouds. Although that little bit of gray in there kind of helps with the, the look. I can come back with some white on top. So we'll be using graphite in our design. So if you want to put add a little bit of graphite to your brush. I'm not really sure why this brush didn't get cleaned when I used it last time. But I'm just using warm white. So you can just go straight warm white if you want and omit the graphite in there. It does give your clouds a little bit of fun look. And then down here, you know, as you get closer to the horizon, the clouds appear more um, thin and almost flat because um, they are so much farther in the distance. And we're not going to be seeing a lot of stuff here. So there are some um, kind of distant looking, or distant, um, some fun looking clouds. <laughs> I get my words out in just a minute and I'm having a hard time with my words today, goodness gracious. And our gnome goes here, so he'll probably block out some of those clouds. I am going to try and get some of this black out of my, or whatever color is in my, um, brush here. Put out some fresh warm white and I'm going to try and lighten those clouds just a little bit. I like that they have a little bit of gray look to them. I think that looks really cool. So I will in my instructions probably say a little tiny bit of charcoal and some warm white. And I still have that color in my brush. Okay, I think I got all the gray out of my brush now. So let's try some just white on top. Just kind of here and there. Just have a little a little fun with your clouds. Keep the lighter color more at the top. Put a little bit more up here. Too much paint in my brush. those look pretty good. I like those clouds. Um, you know, that's that's background stuff, so don't worry about making it perfect. So we're going to make our background trees now. And um, again, you can take some type of scruffy type brush and um, create your background. We're going to take some shoreline and some leaf green and mix it together and use some type of scruffy type brush that you like to use. Um, I'm going to grab a scruffy one. Okay again I'm thinking I just kind of want to scrub these in. I don't want tons of detail so I'm just using a, a medium stiffness uh, filbert type brush. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to use my leaf green and my blue and create a light blue-green value here. Let's see if this will show up. This is distant stuff, so I'm just going to kind of 
do the look of some distant trees by just kind of scrubbing in here. I don't want them to be too detailed or, you know, I don't, I don't want them to stand out a lot. Um, I just want them to be in the background. So that's why I'm mixing the, the sky color in and just scrubbing the look of some distant stuff going on. Our gnome will be here and covering up a lot of this, but we still want to make sure there's some stuff that we can see around our gnome. So just a rough little scrubby stuff. I mean, you can be more detailed with yours if you want, but I want that to be back in the far background. Ooh, focus camera. I want it to be back in the far distant background. And I might even put a layer of, add a little bit of warm white to that mix and lighten them up a little bit more. Subtle is the key here for this background stuff. All right, I'm going to leave it there at that, and we are going to get our line drawing on now and get some base coats on our line drawing. Okay, I've got my line drawing on here, just the basic outline of things with my gray graphite underneath it. And so I'm just going to go in and add all of my basic line shapes. And then we can get our base colors in. I'm not going to put the daisy in yet. some cool sunglasses on. I'll probably make his lenses maybe a little bit bigger than what they are there. And the mustache part is just reference for as you paint it in. So leave the daisy off when you're adding your detail lines in. You know your we're just getting basic shapes right now. We'll leave the holes off in the pants. We'll leave the laces off on the shoes. got all the basic basic lines that we need to just paint in our base coats. So let's get our base coats on now. Alrighty we got our base coats on. Um, let's see let me tell you what we did. Um, we got charcoal here here and in the lenses. We got a warm white with just a tiny bit of charcoal mixed in with it for the bottom of the shoe. Bright blue for the pants. The shirt is um, primary yellow and warm white mixed to make a light yellow color. The glasses are Tuscan red, the hat is warm white, and the star is primary yellow. So just some basic uh, colors going on here. I didn't put the base coating on camera because it's basic color book painting. You just paint inside the lines and then I transferred on some lines that I thought I might need as I move forward on this design. So right now I want to work on the jeans and I want to um, 
take a dry scruffy brush that I've loaded with paint and removed most of the paint if not all of the paint out of and just scrub onto the jeans and making them look a little bit of uh, worn kind of look we're going to add some little holes in here so just add some little scruffy spots onto the jeans uh, super easy fast you don't have to think too much about it they don't need to be great big bright uh, spots so don't um, try and get them crazy bright and now we're going to take a small round brush and paint some um, holes in the jeans and you can make these holes in your jeans any way any place that you want um, I'm gonna put one right over here and just kind of make it a, a different kind of shape this is with midnight blue I'm gonna put one here and one over here okay so those are our holes. Um, we're going to um, paint those in again and I might add a little bit of uh, lamp black to that blue the next time I put them in so that they stay nice and opaque. All right, let's go to our shoes while that's drying and paint in our little circles. And the circles are peeking out from under here. Probably not that much of the circle. And then here we might see a little bit more of this one. Okay. Alright, those spots on the jeans should be dry. I want to go back to them. I'm going to take my midnight blue and a little bit of black and mix it together. It's going to make that blue a little more opaque. And we'll paint these in again. And then I'm going to clean my brush and load some warm white. And we're going to tap very lightly. Too much water in my brush here. And make these little stringy things kind of coming off of the jeans. Just make them look, you know, like they're kind of worn out right there. You know how the jeans are nowadays. All kinds of holes in them. All right, this is just a light little tapping. You can make it look like little stringy things coming off of it if you want to. Little pity pat taps. Okay, so we've got some cute little holes in the jeans here. Super cute! Super, super, super cute! Alright, we're going to shade on our jeans with that midnight blue. So I've got a 3 8 inch angle brush and I'm loading the toe of the brush my midnight blue. I think I'm going to spritz my palette here with some water. Always need to clean water for floating so spritz the edge with some clean water. That's a touch too much. And this midnight blue is pretty transparent so you're not going to get a lot of color change at first. So we're going to go around all of the elements here with the midnight blue. And 
come up the side just a little bit. Got the highlight edge there. Get that off of my shoe here. Alright, let's go do the other leg. That was just the, the first layer. So we're going to go around. this part of the jean here. It's kind of tucked behind, so we'll darken that area there. And each side of the cuff. Okay, so that's that's our first shading there on the jeans. And these are so going to be so cute. Oh my gosh, I can't hardly stand it. Okay, so that's our first shading there on the jean. This leg is dry, so we're going to take our blue, midnight blue, and add a tiny little bit of black to it. Darken that paint up and create some darker, more paint in my brush here. Darken this all up. Put a little bit of this around our hole in the jeans. A little bit of black in with blue. Mix a little more. Snap the shoe there. I'm going to keep this nice and narrow, not let it get wide and crazy like that. Alright, let's go around the holes here. Don't let it get too wide. Keep it tight in there. And I think I need a little bit more in here. Let's add some highlights on our jeans. And let's see what color we're going to use here. Um, we're going to use some shoreline, which we used in the sky. So we're going to use shoreline and bright blue. One bright blue to two shoreline. So when I do that, I dip one, two, and one. Okay, grab some water because that's a lot of paint right there and I don't want tons on my brush for this first highlight. I add just a scooch more of that darker blue in there. Okay. So this is highlighted here. On that edge, highlight the cuff. And 
out here on the edge of this knee. Take the water edge and smooth it out and tap with your finger. So that's our first little highlight on there. And then we're going to brighten our highlight with um, an equal mix of shoreline and warm white. So let's mix that equal amount. Really work it into my brush here. Working in with that water that's in my brush so it'll be a nice soft color. Tap my paper towel. I have a lot of paint in my brush so just wipe some of it out. I forgot to shade that part right there. Put a little highlight up here on this edge. This shoreline and warm white equal mix. That really didn't need to be that big. Okay, a little bit more up this edge. I need to darken right there with that uh, black and blue mix. Just tuck some in there. Just into that little folded area right there. Okay, that's pretty much going to finish up his pants. Oh no, we got to add some stitching on here. So, let me find my detail liner brush in here. And maybe I'll just use this small round. Uh, I'm going to put some stitching on the jeans with some warm white, so I'm going to thin that with some water. I don't really want a bunch of water in my brush. And we're just going to make some stitching. Ooh, that's way too big. Way, way, way too big. Let's see. I know that's the brush I use, but Let's grab a detail liner and see if we can't get some smaller little stitch lines. This one's got a wild hair on it. Let's put some across the cuff on the pants. We can't really see any of the stitching on this leg because it's kind of behind. And I really think I want to create a little bit of shadow, like the seam on the pants. See if I even like that. I might not like it look like a seam going across here. Not 
too bad. That was just with the um, midnight blue. So that will definitely finish up the pants. Um, I think they are super, super cute. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go down here and finish his little shoes. I want to paint this circle a second layer. Warm white. Okay. All right. I'm going to grab a detail liner that doesn't have a wild hair on it. And we're going to go into our warm white. And I'm actually using a one round, but um, you can use like a 10 0 or some, something like that. I'm going to line this line and this one. Using warm white. And then on this shoe, we're going to around the shoe like that and we're also going to make our shoestring looks so if you want to put some dots out here we can't really see that dot there so on this one we'll put some dots So that's how we start it. Okay, let's take our white and make some shoestrings. Or warm white. We have warm white here. Two strings on that one. Let's go over here. And this one we can't see the opposite side, so we're going to paint these in first. And then we'll come back from over this way and connect one. I feel like I'm missing something somewhere. Because I need one here. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. It's looking so cute. Let me erase my lines where my circles are. We'll add the upper shoestrings in just a minute. Let's get some Tuscan Red out. And I'm going to thin a little bit of that with some water. This is where you want the thinnest brush that you can manipulate and get a thin line from. So we're going to paint a line inside this circle. And then I'm going to put the letter C inside of it. You can put any letter that you want, no letter at all, whatever. This one will just see part of the circles. We won't see really the letter. So we'll just do it that way. Super cute! Okay, I think I might go over the shoestrings again, make sure they're opaque on this on this shoe the other shoe I think well I might need to go over them as well
Okay, I went to the went to the wrong one there. But oh well, it still worked out fine. Okay, let's add some. This one here, we'll just see maybe a piece of the shoestring coming out. Maybe a piece here of the shoestring. And then this one, we might see a little bit. I'll draw it in so that you can visualize it. We're going to see a little bit of, because the loop goes up here underneath. We're going to have the loop going under the pants, so I drew it on top of the pants so you can kind of see. How it's going to go here. So I'm not going to draw the line in that's on top of the pants. this part up here and then if I got something above on my cuff I'm going to take a little bit ooh, or a lot of water I don't need that much I will have to run down a little bit and erase to where it pushes it back underneath the cuff okay all right, so we just got to do some shading on the shoes, and they'll be done. So let's shade with some black. And I'm not really sure what size brush I want to go with here. We got the 3 8 but I've got a quarter inch one handy. All right, I really want to work that paint into my brush. Grab a little drop of water, make it um, almost transparent. So we're going to go under here. With that shadow. And under here. Okay. We're going to go long. Repeat that. I want that to be a little bit darker. So make sure it's dry before you paint over it again. A little bit of shadow there. This part of the shoe I want to be shadowed. And right here on the sole. This is lamp black. Come down the back and onto the sole with our lamp black along the bottom a little bit. come along the whole bottom edge of the sole here just a little bit of black don't don't fill in your your whole sole there you just want to see that little black kind of along the bottom edge maybe the sole is black but the edge the edge is white so shadows back there on that side. We could have put a little bit of shadow in here before we painted our shoelaces in. So if you haven't painted yours in yet you might want to add a little bit of black right next to this 
side flap. And then on this one we'll go right here. Just kind of go underneath that line. I'm going to paint that line back in because I don't want it to look black. I want it to stay a little more on the white side. There we go. Okay, that's, that's those shoes are looking pretty good. We're going to do one more thing on the shoes here and we're going to put some uh, hash marks with some warm white. Use a detail brush. I'm using this round. But the thinner lines would be better because that just looks terrible. So I'm going to take that off of there. And to get the detail or the smaller round, it's got a little bit better of a point on it. front here and just some hash marks I need a little water in that How cool and cute are these shoes? They are super cute. Super, super cute. Love those jeans and those shoes. Those are super cute. Okay, we're going to move on to the shirt now. And I'm going to be using this um, drywall tape. It's tacky on one side. And we can just lay it right over. I'm going to try and cover as much of the shirt as possible. So I've got a little, uh, the little section of shirt down here that I can't get covered. Something stuck to that. So if you have more than one piece of drywall tape, you can You can cover that up. Now, if you're worried about going um, into the background, just grab a piece of scrap paper, piece of post-it note, any kind of piece of paper. And as you're painting this, you can lay the paper beside the area where you don't want to get any paint, and um, that will keep you from getting it into your background. So I've got on my palette some antique gold and some burnt umber. Um, I'm thinking I don't want just straight antique gold. I want to dirty it up with a little burnt umber. And now I'm not going to do the entire shirt. Uh, what I want to do is a little bit of a hit and miss. So I loaded my brush with just a little bit of paint. Then I go to my paper towel and on a dry spot I remove um, some of the paint because I just want this to be a subtle little thing in here. Super cute. So I'm going to just go around my shirt and put this in some random places. I don't want to get it on his hand. Oh, I think I might be filling up the whole shirt mostly. filled this whole side up over here which I could come back with a, you know a base color and take some of that down all right let me move this down here to this 
There we go. And put some of that on there. That is a super easy way to get checks on your shirt. And I love using this stuff. So uh, if you don't have any of that, I highly recommend that you get some. It is amazing stuff. I do sell it on my website. If you are interested in it, you can go to a hardware store and get a big roll of it. It will last you a lifetime. Um, maybe you have some friends that you can share it with. That would be great. Okay, so um, for the shirt, we're going to shade with some burnt umber. So we're going to work into our angle brush. And we're going to shade all the places that we need to shade with our burnt umber. His beard's going to be coming over this arm, so... That's why it's so flat right there. It won't be that way when we get our beard on here. Now, you could certainly paint your uh, shirt any color that you want and add some different color stripes. I was originally going to add some orange stripes on here, but um, I wasn't using orange anywhere else, so I didn't, didn't want to bring in a color that I wasn't going to be using somewhere else. We may add a button on the cuff there. Get a little water. Paint doesn't want to move, then you got to get some water in it. Here on the shirt, I think I'm going to make a, a dark area right here to where, like, that's the under part of the shirt. And we'll create a little bit of a highlight there. Next to the beard. Okay, there's our first shading on our shirt. And we will definitely be darkening this. Burnt Umber is really good for, you know, a yellow shirt because um, it's very transparent. So it makes a very nice layer of paint um, where you need a nice layer of paint sleeve right here just a little bit okay so let's go in and repeat all of our burnt umber and darken it up That's the darkest area right in there. And a little bit here on the edge. Super cute. I think on the shirt we're going to highlight with some warm white. Let's see how this turns out. Uh, I think I might mix some 
primary yellow. And with it, see if I can get just a very soft light yellow. And I like it better. It looks very similar to the same. Highlight there. So you can use warm white and you can add a little tiny bit of bright yellow in there. I see absolutely no difference between the two. So don't uh, feel like you have to do it. We might repeat the highlight with just Snow White, which we haven't used in this project yet. Um, so if you want to go over it again with just warm white, oh, you can. Goodness, I couldn't get that open. But I think I will use some warm white. Okay, Snow White is what I'm using. Or maybe not. I'll get it loaded in my brush. There, here, our beard may go over our cuffs a little bit, so we may not end, end up seeing a whole lot of this color on, on right there. I think I want to put a little bit of burnt umber on that lower part of the shirt tail here. That was a little bit too much. Let me try that again. That looks pretty good. I like that shirt. Shirt and jeans and shoes all done. Um, like I said, you can just take a brush and make stripes and checks and things on there if you want and change up the color however you would like. I think he is so adorable. All right, I want to work on the hands and the nose next. We're going to shade on the nose with, and hands. We're going to mix our um, flesh color, which is warm beige, and some Tuscan red. So here's my warm beige, and I'm going to get a little bit of Tuscan red in there. We'll just start out with a, a nice soft pink color, and we'll go from there. So, let's see, hmm, I'm trying to decide if I want the top or the bottom of his nose to be the bright pink. Alright, let's go ahead and work on the hands here. We'll go next to the shirt. And yeah, we'll separate the hands here. This is a very soft pink color, don't um, let it get to, to the red side. So I think we're going to put the color on the bottom of his nose and make the highlight on top. So we're going to give him a nice pink nose. This is just the first layer. Don't feel like you got to get to that bright color on the first layer because um, you know you won't have anywhere to go if you get it too dark too quick. Do the bottom edge of the hand over here. And over here. Ok. 
Okay. That is a super incredibly soft float, so I really um, toned down the paint, the Tuscan Red, with the base color of the um, Warm Beige, and then I had plenty of water in my brush. Not a ton, but enough that I could mix it and make it a really light color. So um, if you get it too dark, go back to your base color, whatever you used, warm beige, if you mixed it with uh, warm white, which I think I did mix mine with some warm white, just go back and paint some of that over and start building your values again because you don't want them to be too dark too quick. So once it is dry, we're going to repeat that. So I'm going to take some of my red and some of my flesh color and mix them together. I'm going to work on the nose first this time. And a nice soft float of color here. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of burnt umber so I can darken that a little bit and create our second layer here. Tiny bit more burnt umber. That looks pretty good. I'm going to do his nose again, but I need to get it dry. Okay, I'm drying my nose here, so I'm going to mix my color again. And it's probably three, um, two to three of the um, warm beige to one Tuscan red. That Tuscan red is pretty powerful color. And get a little bit of the burnt umber. On the nose I want it to be a little bit brighter so I'm going to add a little bit more of the red and a tiny drop of the burnt umber like we did on the hands because I want his nose to be a little bit more of a nice neutral pink color and not a bright red color. And then we're going to highlight with some warm white. Work that into my brush a little bit. I always touch the tip of my brush to my paper towel before I go to my surface because there could be a lot of paint built up on the very tip and I don't want that uh, coming onto my painting and making a big thick yucky area on my painting. So we highlight with warm white. Top of the nose to highlight. I'm going to shade the bottom of the nose again. I want it to be just a touch brighter than that. And then this will all repeat and we're going to uh, dry and then we're going to repeat that warm white on the hands again. I'm going to go a little bit darker on the nose, a little bit more Tuscan Red, and then our um, flesh color. I still want a little bit of that burnt umber in there to neutralize that pink a little bit. and kind of tap that, get a little bit of those brush strokes out of there. All right, I'm going to go to a smaller angle brush here for the last highlight. 
quarter inch angle brush for our last highlight on our hands and our nose. Oh, way too much water in my brush. Stuck my finger in the yellow paint. Right. And you can come back with Snow White um, if you want it to be a little bit brighter than what this warm white makes it. I don't feel like you have to, um, you know, if your painting is turning out a little bit brighter than mine, then definitely grab the Snow White and put some of that in there. I might mix a little Snow White in with my warm white. And get that highlight on the nose a little bit better. There we go. I'm going to leave the nose right there until I get his beard painted in because I might want to come in and even darken up the lower edge of his nose just a tiny bit more. I think I'll take a little bit of that nose color mix and darken down here on the bottom of the hands next to the cuff. So that has his hands and his nose done for now. Um, his nose might get a little bit more of attention later. His hands are definitely done. All right, I have been debating for <laughs> almost a full day. That's how long it's been since I worked on this. What color to do the hat? Because I just undercoated it with warm white. So I think I'm going to um, paint his hat in red and I'm going to do the glasses in a different color so that they're not um, you know kind of blending in together I want to put some patches on his hat I don't know if I'm going to have this coming across the front or behind but I'm going to take my Tuscan red and <clears throat> apply a couple of coats of this color on here not going to worry about where my um, hat band is right now. I just want to get it painted in with red. And Tuscan Red's pretty bright color. So my next coat, when it dries, I'll have a look at it. I might want to um, tone it down with a little bit of graphite, make it a more muted red. So we shall see when it when it dries how it looks. It'll be a little bit closer to the color that I painted in the glasses if I change the color. Um, but I just have just been so unsure what color to paint this hat. So I do want you to undercoat it with, you know, your warm white or with a light gray color. Uh, light gray works best underneath red. But since I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the hat, I base coated it in that color. So I will go off camera and get this finished base coating two coats. And if I decide to add a little bit of graphite to it, when I come back, I'll let you know that. But you can certainly paint your hat in any color that you want. If you envision a whole different color in your hat, um, I plan on putting uh, little patches on the hat, but you could do certainly a rainbow of colors on the hat. It would be really cute. I'm going to use this smaller brush here to paint this tail in over here. And I still don't know if I'm going to have this coming across the front or behind. So Okay. So now I have to figure out what color I want to paint 
the glasses. So I'm going to get the hat two coats painted in and I think I'm going to go ahead and paint in the beard because I think that will help me kind of figure out what I want to do with the glasses. Okay, I finally settled on what I'm doing to the hat. <laughs> Changed the glasses to blue and it is an equal mix of shoreline and bright blue. So if you're painting along with me, you might want to change that color and I apologize for that. In the instructions it has it this color so um, you know just follow your instructions for your base coats and everything will be just fine um, so we're gonna work on the beard I wanna kinda finish out the beard and then we'll do the glasses and the hat and I added patches to my hat you do not have to add patches you could add just one patch um, you could put stars on the hat, polka dots on the hat, whatever you want to do to the hat. But um, I thought some patches would be kind of cute since he's got holes in his jeans and go from there. I do want to add a little button onto his um, shirt. So I'm going to take some warm white and add a little button on each cuff. And then we'll come in and add some buttonholes to that in a little bit. And that's an option thing. You don't want buttons on your cuffs. You don't have to add them. Okay, so we're going to work on the beard. I'm going to stay with this round brush that I have here. I'm going to be using graphite, lamp black, and warm white. And um, I've got graphite as my main color here. So when I'm using graphite in this um, beard I will probably add a little bit of white to it um, so I think I will start with that mix I'm just gonna mix an equal mix of graphite and warm white and we'll start adding some hairs try and keep these kinda thinner I don't want his beard to be coming super or thick so, go up to our glasses. I'm going to come beside the glasses a little bit there. I'll probably come back in and stroke those back in later because when I shade inside the hat, I'll get into those. And um, I want to make sure that they are seen. So, this is just a light layer here. Grab some water. When, I, when my brush gets draggy like that, or I feel like I'm pushing hard, I need either more paint or more water or both. So this is just making a, a light gray value, kind of like gray sky, but we do not need to grab another paint when we can mix it right here on our palette with the colors that we have. That one got kind of fat there. And we're going to come back in with some graphite ones, I think, and bring the edge of the beard out a little bit more. Come right down to the hands. Now, we can have some going over the shirt there a little bit if we want to. I'm going to put some on the mustache here. I might add a little bit more of the white so I can distinguish my mustache a little bit better. Just staying up on the tip. I've got water mixed in with my paint so it's got a nice flow to it. It's not so thin that it disappears into, you know, nothing. If you get too much water, then things start to disappear. Let me grab a little drop of water for that. This is, I added more graphite onto my brush. I want to put some darker um, strokes coming out from around the beard here, and then I'm going to come back in with my lighter gray. But I couldn't quite see them coming out, and your beard can look wavy or whatever you know whatever style of beard you want him to have then you just have fun with it I 
I just want to bring some gray. Might grab a little bit more of the graphite here. A little bit darker. I want a little bit darker. Coming out here. And then I can come back in with my my light gray mixture, which is the um, graphite and warm white, and I can stroke some back over this dark that I put on here. So you first want to take your your graphite color and put some strokes in there of that color so that you can. Um, bring that light gray out away from that confined shape of the beard that we painted in with the graphite to begin with. Okay, and there is our first layer on his beard. Isn't he so cute? I love that. I am going to quickly um, put on my second coat on all of my patches so we can have those ready. And I did decide to bring my hat, um, end of my hat coming over the top, but you can certainly keep it wrapped behind and just peeking out over here on this side. Um, really, that's whatever uh, appeals to you um, is going to work just fine. So don't feel like you are that you have to um, create it exactly like mine. If you liked it better going behind, then you go for that. Isn't he turning out just so cute? I am just so in love with this little, um, I'm calling him my lumberjack gnome. Well, I was at first, but now I think I'm calling him my hobo gnome um, with all of his patches and tears in his pants. But um, he is adorable. So my patches I painted warm white, primary yellow, leaf green, shoreline, primary blue, and this is graphite and white uh, with just a little bit of white because you can see it's darker than this color. So it's not the complete darkness of graphite. I added just a small amount of white in there to make a medium value gray. But you can paint your patches any colors that you want. No patches, fine, one patch cool so whatever appeals to you i'm going to get my second coats on off camera and then we'll come back and work some more on his beard right let's add another layer on the beard and we're going to go with some warm white here Now when you're doing your layers on your beard, you don't want to cover up each layer, so make sure you can see some of that graphite and some of this, um, some of the uh, medium gray color and some of this snow white. Up on the tippy toe of your brush. You can use a rake brush to create all this beard hair as well. Now I'm going to put some on the mustache. You can see I didn't take all the hairs all the way directly up to the edge of the mustache. So we can definitely see the definition in the mustache itself. of the mustache there with a little bit brighter 
white or warm white is what we're using and with the warm white you can go a couple of layers with it actually with any of the colors you can go a couple of layers so if you feel like you need to add a second layer or maybe just a few more strokes thin a little bit more down here you need just a few more strokes of this warm white you can go in and add another small layer and this will help brighten up his beard stay up on the tippy toe of your brush Okay, now just on the mustache, I think I might add just a little bit of snow white on there. And I want to finish out his little buttons as well. Go ahead and put a second coat of warm white on there. Give him some little threads on there in a minute. So now I've got just snow white on my brush. Get the some of that moisture out of my brush. And white really likes to fade down in there, so don't feel like if you put a lot on here it's going to be incredibly bright unless you just end up almost painting it solid in. The white will kind of settle down into the beard. I'm going to erase my lines I drew in here and right there I want to fill in a little bit getting a little bit of gray and fill in right there definitely want to see definition. We're going to shade around the mustache, but we don't want to see huge gaps between, um, you know, everything. So even up here at by the glasses, I brought it up fairly close to the glasses. But you can see I made it uneven so that it, it looks more natural that way. And I think I want to bring a few hairs. Wash my brush out it overloaded and I can go on a little bit different directions here not quite so controlled and then we're gonna have the daisy here so we don't have to really worry too much about that but like I said you can make his beard you know come even longer and come down and cover part of his hands well you don't really want it to cover his hands his hands need to be in front of the beard but the sides over here can be longer if you want it shaped a little bit different so I think that's all I'm going to add to the beard for now I might come back with a little bit more white here after I get some shading in here but um, I'm liking the values that are in the beard right now and so uh, once we shade we'll we'll be able to tell if we want to add just a little bit more brightness so we're going to shade with some graphite more water in my brush it feels dry we're starting out with graphite because it's you know such a lighter value and we may go in with some lamp black we don't want to get too dark 
um, too quick. So I'm going to go around the glasses here and both lenses. I don't have much paint on my brush at all, so. Go around the nose on top of the mustache right there. We're going to then go around the mustache on the inside. I need a little bit of water. And I just want to lightly put some around the outside edge here. Not real dark. And that might even be a little darker than what I want. I'm going to bring the shading on the mustache down just a little bit. I have hardly any paint on my brush. so, And this is graphite. And graphite is a much lighter color to shade with. I think it gives us a nice effect. I'm going to put a little bit down here even though the flower is going to cover all that up. We won't see it. Um, in case you ever want to paint it without him holding the flower and him just sitting here, you'll need a little bit of shading down here. And if, if the hair stops at the arms, that's fine. Um, if it's you shouldn't need any shade in there, I don't think. I am going to come back and add some more white onto this guy here. And I think I'm going to put it all over his beard, give him some highlights. And I'm getting my paint to move very well here. I want to add tons of water to my white because it will definitely make it um, fade down into the paint and some of this I want to stand a little more on top not that big old thick little goober that I just did Just a little lighter. Zoom in here. I probably should have had you zoomed in the whole time, but that's bold. That was too bold. And like I said, any time that you feel like you've lost, like you've lost some of your medium gray color, come back in with it. And you'll be all right. Okay, I think his beard's looking pretty good. You can continue to play around with his beard <clears throat> and... Uh, create your layers more if you want more gray in it and things like that so uh, the beard is never done to you decide it is done so it is your beard so when it's done that's your choice all right we're going to work on the glasses now and finish them out and then we will finish out our cute hat. So our glasses shouldn't take too long to paint here. I'm going to shade with some midnight blue next to the nose here. And along the bottom of the lens. I want to separate the earpiece here. We'll go along the top as well because it's kind of tucked underneath the hat 
left here hat band and this is midnight blue and we're going to darken all of this so not to worry So that was our first little shading there with some midnight blue. Okay, so we're going to deepen that shading and add just a tiny little bit of lamp black to our uh, midnight blue. So let's do um, like two blue to one black. We're just going to, it, we're almost just dirtying up this midnight blue. Use that water edge to smooth it out. the hat band here just on the tippy toe of that brush along over here it can be so easy to fill in your lenses here so easily so try not try not to do that uh, we still want to see a little bit of that blue that we based it in so just kind of stay up on the toe and, you know, don't lay your brush flat like we normally do in floating. I need to tuck a little dark color in here. And I'm going to make this a little darker right here. Just picked up a tiny bit more black on my brush. Still have that blue in there. I'll make this just a little darker here. Okay, maybe right next to the nose. We'll just put a little scooch. I think that will be good for our shading. Um, when we do the hat, we'll come back and go maybe across both lenses of the glasses and push them back even farther. But for now, I think right there is where we'll leave the shading. We're going to add some highlighting now. Highlighting, I'm going to take my little round brush and load some warm white in my brush and work it into my brush so that I'm going to be more like dry brushing on here and I'm going to dry brush this color just drag it across my lenses and the earpiece a little bit maybe just a tiny bit up here not too much we want to be still be able to see all that blue there so don't don't let it get too carried away I have a tiny bit of paint in my brush I do not have extra moisture and I'm just kind of letting the brush tickle across the uh, lenses and I feel like I got too much over here so I'll go back into my base color which is the blue in the shoreline and put some of that back in here maybe keep my highlighting a little bit just on the right side so this one will just be mostly at the bottom just slightly there on the inner side there 
and put a little bit onto there. Okay. Okay, let's shade a little bit on the lenses with some black. We're just going to shade a little bit at the bottom. And keep it mostly on that left side. I don't know how much of this you'll even notice because um, the lenses are such a dark gray color with that graphite. Um, but we might be able to tell a little variance of color in here. And then we'll just drag a little bit of warm white like we did on the lenses onto our or like we did on the frames onto our lenses. Goodness, I got water everywhere. That is a lot of water over there. That was so wet it tried to paint it instead of um, you know just dragging it on there. A little bit of white. Okay. And you know, if you get too much, like I feel like I got just a scooch too much in the lenses, we'll just take our graphite and kind of skim it back. Ooh, focus there. Ooh, there we go. And we'll just do it that way and keep it a little bit more, um, not quite so bright. I really feel like I want to darken on the glass frames over here just a tiny little bit. Next to the nose there. Okay. I'm going to leave the glasses there. Really, you can do polka dots on your glasses, rainbow colors on your glasses, flowers on your glasses, checks on your glasses, whatever you want to do. This is your opportunity to be creative. Um, on the hat and the glasses, um, just have fun with it and uh, do whatever appeals to you. But uh, I think he's looking pretty cute. I think he would have looked cute with black glasses as well. And I could have made my uh, lenses on there a lighter gray color and shaded with the graphite. Um, but generally black glasses are black lenses. So you have to be careful being able to determine what is the lens and what is the frame. So just have a lot of fun doing it in whatever color you want to do it in. So, all right, let's work on the hat now. And um, we're going to work on all of the patches, putting some detail onto them, some checks, some polka dots, some stripes, some swirls, whatever you want. Or you can leave them just plain colors. Um, this one I might leave just the plain color and make it like a denim patch and kind of give it some wearing stuff like that one, that, like his jeans, and have a little fun with that. So let's create our patches on here. And um, again, this is where I want you to really express yourself and create these patches like you want them. We are going to put little stitch lines on them as well. Speaking of stitch lines, let's go down to our little buttons real quick before I completely forget about them. And I'm trying to get some graphite here. My paint's getting all dried out, so about time to put some fresh paint out. I want to put a couple little dots if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. And each one, these are going to be deep tiny little dots. 
see if I can zoom in on that. Tiny, tiny little dots. Use a detail liner so they don't get ginormous. Try and make them the same size on each one. I do want to put a little bit of a shadow. I'm still just using graphite around the button. Hoping you're on camera for this. Okay, and then if you want a little bit of a string coming off of them, I'm actually going to make the string a different color, maybe a light gray or something. You can make a little string coming off of it. That's a pretty fat little string. Let's narrow that up. And maybe make it a little bit brighter. Okay, we'll just do one. We don't, we don't need to do both. So a uh, little uh, graphite dots and then a little bit of graphite around the bottom edge for a little bit of a shadow. And then a little string coming off of one of them if you want a string. So don't uh, feel like you have to add a loose string on there. I just want to give this guy as much personality as I can. Okay, so for my blue one up here, I'm going to make a little kind of tear in it, almost like the jeans have down here. We will do that. Um, if you want to take this color while you got it on the, your brush and do something with one of the other ones, you can. So this is where you get to have a lot of fun uh, creating some colors in your... Um, patches. So I definitely want a couple of them to be checked. Uh, I think the green one I definitely want to be checked and I think I will put some black checks in this one. So I'm just going to draw a couple lines close together, make a gap, a couple lines close together, make a gap, put one here, maybe one here. And I think I might put one down the center. And I'm going to go across this way. I'm going to lay the brush a little bit flatter going this direction. So my checks are a little bit bigger. And you can keep them all just, you know, the same size, the same thickness, the same neatness. You can come back and maybe do... You could make that whole line thick and keep those other ones thin. Um, I'm not sure if I would like that, but I'm gonna give it a try. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. So, you know, let your imagination just go crazy. Um, I'm gonna put some polka dots. Let me add a little bit of my blue back up on here. Got my little tear. I think I'm going to add some little polka dots onto one of these. And I think I'm going to polka dot that one. The yellow one. Uh, maybe with some burnt umber. Use whatever colors you have in your palette to just create some fun stuff. Okay. Uh, what color am I going with? Burnt Umber. <laughs> Forgot what I was doing. Alright, little dots on this one. Just a little dotted material. This one, I think I might put some um, stars on it and maybe if I can make some stars on that little bitty one. Just 
just do whatever you want. You want zigzags on here, go for some zigzags. Uh, I'll just do five stars. I just I don't think I can get any more than that on there. And um, maybe some warm white. And we'll just make another. Checked one there. This one, I'm just going to leave the color that it is, but I'm going to give it some raggedy edges with some warm white. Got a little bit too much water in my brush here. Because I didn't paint it in very smoothly so that I could um, give it some worn and frayed edges on here. While I have this warm white on my brush, I'll just go up here to this this one and make this little tear in it up here. Just a little tapping, give it that rough little texture look. Okay, so now we just need to do a little bit of shading on our patches. I do want to come back and darken that white edge here though. Warm white. Make it look a little more frayed on there. This patch is really worn out. Pretty darn worn out. Just make it as worn as you would like. Okay, let's start adding some shading on our patches and then we'll be shading around our patches, adding some strings and things on there. Um, so we'll just start up here with the blue one and we're going to go with midnight blue. We're going to do it like we did the jeans. First thing I want to do is go around this little tear here. Put some up here. I'm going to shade right here on this edge because this could be folded over a little bit to the back. Okay, we'll have to let that dry and repeat, and when I repeat, I will add a little bit of black to it. Um, for this light blue one, we're going to take bright blue. And we're going to add a little bit of shading with this bright blue. And I'm going to stay off of my white that I created the... Um, like rough edges on this one. And I'm going to go around the whole thing just lightly right next to all that little rough edge we got there. Okay, we'll repeat that. I'm going to go with some graphite on the gray one, this one here. And it's going to go right inside here on this edge. Okay. Um, I'm also going to use graphite on this one, but I'm going to really work it into my brush with some water to get it a nice light color. And we'll put some on the left and bottom edges of it. Okay. We're going to go lamp black on this one. And we're going to shade next to this because this patch kind of goes underneath that. We just can't see the other edge of it. And I'll put a little bit on this edge here. This will be our more shadowy edge, I guess. And then this one's going to get some burnt umber shading it. And we're going to put it on the lower and right side. That's probably folded around the hat a little bit. And so we'll need to repeat on all of those um, and just darken them a little bit. We don't want to get them overly dark. 
This one right here you may not need to repeat with the black because we're going to come in with a red black mix and go around this and this side and um, create a little bit of shadow coming off of that. We definitely want to get that one pushed back behind our um, hat tail that comes around. So let's repeat all of those shadings. And this one up here we're going to do with the midnight blue and this time I'm going to add a tiny little bit of black in there. And we're just going to go along this edge right here. Okay, wash out. Grab some bright blue. Just a little bit tiny bit don't get carried away and we'll just kind of tap <coughs> around this one wipe a little bit of that paint off I want it to be much lighter than what it is gray one is graphite and so is this one okay and we'll do burnt umber on the yellow one so all of your floats need to go two coats and I think I'll go ahead and darken that one just a little bit especially on that left side with the black okay that looks pretty good um, so now we're going to highlight on some of them and I'm going to do that I think with warm white and we want this highlight to be Kind of subtle so work it into your brush with a little bit of white or a little bit of water so we'll just go along there maybe a little bit along here along this edge each one of them will get um, warm white so this one I'm going to put it in the middle of this one just tap a little bit in the center a little bit one I don't want that to be overly bright but I also don't want it to look like just a line this one won't get a highlight um, so I'm gonna go back and repeat and just get a little bit brightening okay I think I might wash over that one with a little bit of green so it's not quite so in your face bright so just a very sheer color of green. I'm gonna make sure that's dry. Okay, that looks that looks better. Okay. Much better, much better. Uh, where's my graphite? I'm gonna darken this edge just a little bit. Okay, I think I might put a little bit of graphite on this one up here just for a little bit darker. This is a pretty worn patch here. Let's let's kind of dirty it up. Alright, 
right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's finish his hat out here. I'm going to shade on the hat with a mix of uh, Tuscan Red and Lamp Black. And we're going to get this really nice, rich, dark red color. A little tiny bit more black in there. Just really make it a, a just a rich, deep color here. And I want to work quite a bit of this into my brush so I can go a little ways with it. Tap my paper towel. So let's start by um, separating our piece that comes across the top. And yours could be going behind if you chose to do it that way. So we'll go on each side of it. I'm going to come right across my patch because the patch is behind it. And I want to darken below here just a little bit. Up on the tippy toe of my brush as I go around this little curve right here. Okay, I got my my water spritzed on my palette over here, so I can grab drops of clean water as I'm floating, mixing on my brush. When I run out of paint, I'm generally out of water, so I will load both and um, work both into the brush again. I want to go around each of the patches as well. So mix some more, grab a drop of water, blend, blend, blend. If you can't see your color on this red, then you're going to need a little bit more black in your uh, mix there. Just making a really rich dark red here. We're going to come in and add our little stitches after we get everything shaded on here. I want to go next to the brim of the hat. A little drop of water. I'm kind of up on the the toe of the brush, got it tilted up just slightly. And now as I come across here I can lay it more flat and get that nice flat soft float. Let's go inside here. And right now we're just going to fill this in with this color. And then we'll come back and darken in some key places there. Mix some more here. Let's go along the outside edge. And on this edge. We'll go next to our star here. And I'm going to go up this edge, up to about here, I think. I want my highlight to be up there. I'm going to go right over my patch and come down this edge. I need just a touch more black in my mix there. I think I will back that off of the patch just a little bit by taking the water edge and scooting that paint over. Get 
Give me a little bit of glare on my mix here. I'm having a hard time seeing what color I'm mixing. Okay, we want to go around the nose here. Get a little bit more black in there. Have a little shadow coming from the nose here, but the rest of it will be highlighted. And then don't forget to go around this patch. I almost forgot this one. Um, you know, kind of be up on the tip of the brush so you're not painting on the glasses and stuff. Okay, let's go with this color. Get that mixed well and into my brush. In here, this, oops, this edge will be shaded as I get paint everywhere. Take that water edge and remove that. Well, I must have paint over farther on my brush than I want. Okay, let me just clean out my brush because I'm just making a horrid mess there. And let's try this again. Get a little water. Maybe not that much water. And then we'll go back in here. And we're going to go across that. And I'm going to back it off with the water edge. Don't want it to fill in my patch all the way. And then we'll just come to right about there. The rest of this is going to be a highlight. Okay, let's go just along this bottom edge here. This might be a little bit more in the shadow. And then the rest will be highlighted. bad for our first shading. It's got some nice defined areas there. We're definitely going to want to darken in through here with our next one. And I didn't go along this edge, so let me go along this edge. Alright, that's our first shading there, and that was with um, our Tuscan Red and a little bit of black, which made like this uh, deep cranberry wine type color. So that was just one time with it. We are going to deepen with a, a, another mix of this, a little bit more black in the mix this time, and uh, then we'll start doing some highlights on here. So let's mix a little bit more black. In there just a tiny bit we don't still don't want our paint to turn black we still want it to be just that rich cranberry color now I'm going to be up on the very just tippy corner of this brush and use that tip to just scoot some of this paint I might grab a little bit more black in there it needs to be a little darker and scoot that right in there That is definitely our darkest area right there, and we want to make sure that it stays dark. So let's continue with our second float here, a little bit darker. So we've got a little bit more black in there. And this area right here will be a little bit darker. It's a little V, so in the V's we always darken them the most. 
I'm up on the tip of the brush so I'm not filling in this whole area. There's just a small little area right there that uh, will be our highlight area. Let's go on this side. And then we've got a little V area here. Right here, a little V. So it'll have a little bit darker of a shadow. I'm not going to go all the way up that side this time. I'm just going to start right here and make that a little darker. So this is this is where you can kind of hit and miss with your your shading. I'm just going to go down part of this edge with a little bit darker. And down here bit darker if you ever get too much black on your brush just go wipe it off on your paper towel and go right back and blend in more of the red it will all blend together nicely go along this edge and along this edge We'll do inside the hat here in a minute, but I want that to be crazy dark. Now on my patches, I want to almost line them with this darker color. So I'm just going to be up on the um, tip of the brush here and create a little bit of a shadow around. And we don't have to go on every side. This one I'm going to try and keep it wavy to match the, just go in a couple of areas there. And then don't forget this little guy down here. This is just a second little um, shading that's really close to the patch. Now if yours is plenty dark, <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to do that step. Okay, I want to go in here next to the beard. This is the inside edge of the hat. I want a little bit more of the black in here. This is really dark right in here. And we're going to keep it dark next to the edge here. So on this one down at the bottom will be darker. I'm using mostly black here now. This is a really dark shadow. Go up along that edge there, where it stops, and then right next to the beard. So we might have a little section right in the middle that may not be quite as dark. And that still needs to be darker, so I'm going to grab more black. Just keep lightly layering your paints until you get um, some depth in there that you like. I need a little bit of red right through here. So I can blend all that. Okay. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any place. So that looks pretty good. So I think that's pretty good for our shading. We're going to begin our highlighting on everything now. Okay, I'm mixing my Tuscan Red and some Primary Yellow here. Uh, I want to get a kind of an orangey color for my highlight. It's kind of a pinky orange. And we're going to start up here with this color, and that is just a little bit too chalky, so let's go with just yellow. I'm going to be coming back and dry brushing, I think, some white on here. And I thought starting with the yellow would be good. You could probably use bright yellow, too. Bright yellow would be a little more transparent. 
whereas this yellow is more opaque. This is primary yellow. And, you know, if you've got some orange paints like Tangelo orange or something like that, you can come and uh, put that color on here. And definitely need some water here. I just want that to kind of go right through the center right there and then just come out to the edge right here. And we're going to be coming back with some white. This is just our first little kind of dry brushing of color. Just a little kiss of color here. Okay, just a little. Don't get carried away. Let's put some in through here. A little bit of pity pat and scuffing it up. I don't have very much paint on my brush there. So just a little like a little hint of something because when we come back with our white that's really going to brighten things up but you know you got to build your layers up and not let them get crazy carried away okay i'm mixing white and primary yellow or you could use bright yellow let's do two to three to one um i think i might do three to one here i think that's what i've got on my brush here and we're just going to let this just kind of skim across our surface and use your finger to um, push that paint around if you need to. Just a quick little um, highlight here. Put some in the center here. And use my brush to kind of mix it around there. Let's do the hat brim. So I'm just letting the brush just kind of skim across. I'm not pushing the paint into the surface. I'm just letting it kind of kiss the surface. And a quick little pull of the, of the brush lets the, lets the bristles just skim across there. And then we'll come back with our brightest highlight, which will be just white. Let's put a little scuffy stuff here. And you can make your hat look as worn and everything that you want. Um, you know, get your hat, be creative with it. Just have fun with it. Bring that down just a little bit. Bring it over. highlight edges here. I don't really want to see the red. And I have not added moisture to my brush with this. So don't um, don't fill your brush with water. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush out. If I can't get all the yellow and white mixture out of it, I will just um, wash it and then get the excess moisture out. And then I'm going to go with some white. Just straight white. And this will be our brightest little highlight. And, you know, as you build your... Uh, shading and highlight layers you know they get smaller and smaller with each layer that you apply there we go just need that little brightness right in there and dry brushing it let's do the rim of the hat here. A little bit 
here and some here over the glasses. I've got some pink on my glasses right there. I'm not really sure what that's from. Put a little bit up in here. Just a little rough dry brushing. Okay, that's looking like a pretty, pretty worn hat. Okay, let's see if I can get that red off right there. And now we want to put our stitching on our um, patches. So let's grab a detail liner. Now you can use a IdentiPen if you have one. Um, this IdentiPen has a big nib and a small nib. It's not super small so it's not going to make really super thin lines but <clears throat> if you prefer to do that you can. Let's thin down some black paint here. Make it inky consistency. Make sure there's no water on our ferrule. And then we'll just pull some stitches randomly. We're going to highlight these stitches as well on here. Should be a pretty quick little process here. Don't make them really fat. We don't want the stitch lines to be super fat. Let me get a little bit more water and a little bit more paint here. Zoom in a little bit. And the black ones, depending on how much your shade, how dark your shading is, you may not be able to see them all real well. And then we're going to take some white and I'm going to thin that down with some clean water so it will flow off of my brush. And we're going to try and add a little bit of a highlight either beside or on your stitching. I'm putting it beside the little stitch marks. Ooh, that one's kind of big. Try and keep them thin. A couple of those turned out a little fat, but I'm going to leave them, give it some personality. So you'll just be inky consistency on the very tippy toe of your brush. Just let that just skim across. Kind of like we did with, with our highlight, just letting it kind of barely touch. You know, like a touch and pull kind of thing. Just easy peasy. If you've got your paint a nice thin consistency, you've got a nice thin tipped brush that you can use. <clears throat> it should be a fairly easy process to get those stitch marks on there like that. So let's wide angle out so you can see his hat a little bit better. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, let's finish our star on the hat. We'll be done with the hat. We can paint his daisy in, then he will be done, and then we'll just finish out everything around him. So on the hat, we're going to shade uh, first with some antique gold. So I'm side loading, working that into the corner of a quarter inch angle brush. Um, you can use a small flat like a size um, four or six might be a little big but I think you could get a six in here okay. 
So this is antique gold and that is just too thin. I'm just going to go some straight paint here. Remove the excess moisture out of my brush. I want to be able to see this color down here on the bottom of my star. So you should be able to see that value change on there slightly. So you can see it's a little bit brighter up here at the top and a little bit darker at the bottom now. And that needs to dry so that we can um, put some um, 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 extra shading on here. I need to redefine my little buttonholes here. That's probably pretty dry, so I'm going to take burnt umber this time and get it on my brush. Again, I don't want a lot of moisture in my brush, so I'm going to try and go straight paint because burnt umber is pretty transparent. So just put a little tiny bit of that at the bottom. And then we're going to go with. I think we'll go with Snow White on the top. You can do Snow White or Warm White. I think for this one we'll do Snow White. At the very top. And it's just going to be on the top of these two points here. So we should, still should be able to see several values. We got our light yellow, our medium yellow, which is antique gold, and then our burnt umber makes our dark golden yellow. And then up here, we just have our highlight of just white. So um, it's, it's simple. Don't overthink it. Don't overwork it. If you fill in too much with one of your colors, bring your base color back and just kind of pat some of that in there and then softly blend it out and it will all blend together beautifully. Okay, that finishes up his hat. So let's work on the daisy that he is holding. Okay, we're gonna um, paint the, um, the stem and the leaf in with leaf green. So the stem goes from up here somewhere and comes down behind his hands right there. And then a little bit of it is peeking out down here and then the leaf is right here. Nice, long, thin leaf. And we'll just paint it in with some leaf green. Okay, that's one coat and we'll definitely require two. So the daisy itself is going to be painted in with warm white. The petals will be painted in with warm white. So I kept the flowers pretty simple because we require so much work on our little gnome guy that by the time you're done with him you're ready for everything else to be done. I want to keep him, <clears throat> the flowers and everything going around him simple. So when you're painting a daisy, let me see if I got a piece of scrap here I can show you on. When you're painting a daisy, you're going to um, lay your brush. Now you don't necessarily have to have a pattern if you do not want to. Depending on which way you want your daisy to be tilted will determine where these two short lines are. They can be over here on this side, they can be on this side, they can be up here at the top. Up at the top makes it look like your daisy is pointed down and vice versa. So when you're painting a daisy, I like to use a filbert brush and I like to lay my brush flat and then begin pulling it up and giving it a twist and bringing it to the center and creating that nice um, long tail that comes into the um, center of the flower. And then you just continue to add your petals, as many petals as you would like and as big as you would like. That one got a little fat. In the front there'll just be two little dabs right there and then you can add some more in here. So that's how we do a daisy, maybe a couple of short ones in here, and then our center will be in this area here. 
okay? So painting a daisy is pretty easy. So um, use a brush that is a good size for um, the daisy that you want to paint. I need a little tiny drop of water in my paint here. And if you can do this in a quick motion, it really makes your petals look so much better. Okay, then I want my two short ones right there. Okay, so there's the big daisy that he's holding right there. So cute. Let's give another coat onto that green. We will have to put another coat on the daisy as well when it is dry. And your daisy could have two leaves. I think originally I was going to have a leaf coming off of each side, but then I thought, well, well, I think one leaf will be fine. And that's with our leaf green. And we're not going to tap our center in uh, our flower until we have the petals stroked in a second time. Okay, so let's get that dry. Okay, I've got two coats on my daisy. Uh, I need it to dry. Let's wide angle out a little bit here. I want to add a little bit more tree stuff going on in the distance back here. So I've got my dry dome brush. I am mixing um, a little tiny bit of the primary blue the Midnight Blue and the Hauser Dark Green and getting this muted blue color and this is what I'm going to use for the background back here. I'm going to tap a little bit of that off. I don't want a bunch of paint coming off of my brush at once but I want to create some more forward looking bushes or trees or whatever and we're going to tap this in all the way up to our gnome and varying heights. This can be bushes, this can be distant trees, it can be whatever. So let's go over here on this side and add some over here as well. And your background trees that are a little bit brighter, you could, you know, if you're not painting this right now and you're going to paint it later, you could also use this color in the background. And if it gets too um, dark, you can wash over it with your background color, your sky color, and then that will take it down quite a bit. I need to mix a little bit more paint here. You know, when your brush is dry, it doesn't want to let go of the paint as easily. And I feel like over here, it's not really letting go of the paint. Okay. I'm just going to kind of scrub some of that in down here at the bottom of this stuff. And that's a pretty easy little distance stuff to get in there. Um, so we don't have to do much more than that. Um, like I said, it could be bushes. You could add a lot more detail to that by adding, you know, some little twigs and things. But we don't need that much detail. This guy is our focus. So this all stuff just kind of pushes back to the back. So we don't want it to um, becoming. We don't want it to become overwhelming and too much forward. So uh, let's start building some grasses around this guy. Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm going to mix this color up here. So I have bright blue, midnight blue, hazard dark green. That's the color we mixed right here to make those distant trees, but I'm adding leaf green to it this time. So I've got just about an equal amount. I won't need near this much um, for my uh, grasses, but um, this will make a good, uh, nice color to start adding in our grasses with. So I'm just going to mix it together. This is an equal mix here, pretty close to an equal mix. Doesn't have to be perfect or exact. So now I've got these two values of um, 
green that I will be using for my glass, grasses, and these are the two that I will use to stroke in. Okay, I'll probably start in the back with maybe a mix of these two, and then as I'm coming forward, I'll just, I'll, I'll eventually just be using this darker color. So let's start that, and I want you to use a um, detail brush or a round brush, you know, that can make some nice leaves on your um, leaf grasses. Back here I probably want it to be a little bit more thin so I might try a more uh, thin tipped round but as I come forward I want them to be a little bit bigger. So I'll use one of these smaller rounds. So I'll get both of them wet. I have my water over here that I can mix with my paint. I'll put a little bit more out there. I think I need to fill my bottle and clean my spray nozzle. It seems to be squirting out weird. Okay, so um, let's grab some water. And I'm going to grab my leaf green and this color. And mix just a muted color of these two. A little bit more water. We'll see how this flows off of the brush and what kind of grasses it makes. So we just want to start using the tip of the brush and pulling some grasses here, there, everywhere. Um, we're going to be covering this up with some daisies so we don't have to worry about it being perfect in any way. More water. I'm going to mix a little bit more of those two colors with some water. Nice, thin, consistency paint. And I'm going to come down to about here for now. Do the same thing over here, just some nice little strokes. Have them going different directions, that's helpful. Um, these could be interpreted as leaves as well. But let's just create a little bit. If you want to make them look like leaves, you could make them a little bit fatter and maybe coming off of some of those. I think that would be, just put some dabs in there. I don't want you to overthink these grassy things here because we're not going to be seeing much, if any, of this when we're done. So I'm just gonna put some little thicker strokes that I can interpret more as um, leaves. So I'm gonna grab my bigger brush here sure which one's bigger. I'm going to start going into that darker green. <clears throat> Again, adding water to thin it down. And the amount that I mixed up was way more than you needed, but I wanted a good size puddle to be able to show you. Okay, so these can be a little bit bigger and you can add leaves onto these as well. Like I said, when we add our daisies, we won't see a lot of this. We'll bring some up around him. We're going to shade around him before we put our daisies in here because the daisies will be one of the last things that we do. So let's get some, some maybe bigger leaves going in here. That's a lot of thick stuff there. We can bring some grasses up. This can actually be grasses coming up around our little gnome guy. Work your way all the way across. And I'm not getting up on the tip like I would like here with this. I want them to be a little fatter. Not quite that fat, but I do want them to be a little bit fatter down here. I think I'm going to bring my uh, skinnier brush in and put some grasses around the gnome. Just have them going all the way off here. Off the edge. You know, they can go different directions. Don't have them just coming straight up, which is basically what I've done here. So we want, we want some, some stuff going different ways. 
don't do what I just did here and make them all going one direction. Okay, I'm going to bring my other brush in back in here and make some finer grasses. Maybe going over a little bit. I can get it to flow off of my brush. Doesn't seem to be wanting to do that. Again, different directions. Don't confine your grasses to being just straight or your, you know, if these are for your daisies. Different directions is going to give the better look for this. Okay, let's create some little shadows around some of this stuff. I'm actually going to go with a flat brush here. Okay, so I want to shade around our gnome and a little bit underneath some of these grasses. Um, when we paint our daisies on top, that will help give a little bit of depth here. So I'm going to take some black, wet black, and then our mix that we made. And, whew, I got the paint too far over on my brush here. Some more black up here. I want it to be like a black green. So I want it to be mostly black with a little bit of green tint to it. Now black can take over quickly, so don't, don't let it um, overpower. If we need to come back in and add more black, we can, but we can't take it away. So let's add some shading under our little guy here. It's going to be really dark right here where his feet crisscross. Just using the tip of the brush to kind of push some paint up in there. And then we'll bring it out and make it more of a shadow. And then here, this will be a little bit more down this direction. Kind of making the shape of the shoe there a little bit. Now, this is just our first shading, and it definitely needs to be much darker than that. But while we are mixing here, we will do some of this under our grasses. So just a little wiggle of some of this color and smooth it out with the water edge. And we can have some bigger areas as we come forward. Maybe a little shadow right here next to him. And then just continue all the way down, just putting some of this here and there. Creating the look of some shadowy stuff. This will all be behind our daisies, but some of it might peek through. I wash my brush out. I got way too much black in my mix here. Okay, just this is just a little tap tap on the paint side and then take the water edge and scoot it out and wiggle it out and put a little bit right there. And again, this is one of those things, do not overthink it. Just give it a little bit of color in there. I want to add a little bit more black to my mix so I can darken right in here. Make sure this is dry. Because if it's not dry in here, you will just remove all of your paint. I want to make sure I don't get it up on the shoe. And again, uh, you know, a lot of this we won't see when, after we add our daisies coming up all around him. 
but you know if you ever want to paint the gnome just by himself on something holding the daisy then you want to know how to completely finish him out don't um, don't stop short of completing all of your uh, shading that needs to go you know around him and on him and things like that I need to darken here next to his sleeve I'm just going to use a teeny tiny little bit of black to do that. I don't have any blue on my palette, but right here needs to be a little darker. So we'll see if that black will get that trick done. We still haven't finished our daisy out here, but I'm going to put a little bit of this black on each side of it. I don't think there's any left on my brush. I think that's just water. <laughs> so let me try that again and give a little bit of a shadow around our stem. Okay. He is looking so adorable. So now we need to do our daisies and finish up this project. I'm going back to my um, Filbert brush. Now you can go down a size for some of these distant ones or actually I think with the distant ones, I may use a round brush and paint some in back here. I've got some fresh warm white out, so I'm going to load my brush. I don't want to have a ton of moisture in my brush, so I'm going to tap that on my paper towel and load up with some white paint. And then just make some little daisies back here. Don't let them get ginormous back here. Um, if you are concerned that you're going to make them big, you can grab a little stylus and paint them in with a stylus. They can be just a couple little dabs. They can be three or four dabs. Um, just keep them little back here and don't put them all in a row. Just a few small ones back here. Seriously, they're just dabs. Don't, don't be making full on strokes with these. These are just some little dibby dabs. And we may not do any more than that to these. I don't know if we'll try and create centers on these because they're so small. You know, some days they could be up high and some will be closer to the ground. So I'm just doing little dabs. I mean, seriously, just tiny. Little dabs, tiny, tiny. I want some, you know, way back in here. Let's put some tiny, tiny, tiny little dabs back in here. Okay, so we can start coming a little more forward with a little bit bigger dabs. I'm going to stay with this round brush. And I'm going to start creating a little bit more bigger dabs here. I'm kind of giving them a little bit more form, but still not um, getting overly crazy. I do want a few more back in here. I want this to really feel filled up with daisies here. No big open gaps here. I really want to um, make it look like this is just a the biggest field of daisies you've ever seen.
Daisies are really one of the easiest flowers to paint. So it's just some dab, dab, dabs. Okay, as we start coming forward, you know, your daisies will start getting bigger and bigger. So let's start adding some bigger ones in here. And this is where you want to be a little bit more, definitely want to know it's, you can tell it's a daisy. And your flowers can overlap each other. fill this in. I'll be going to my filbert brush here in just a minute as I get more close to the bottom. So I'll probably just do this side on camera. This side's done the same way. Don't want a ton of camera time doing repetitive things here. And look how that's filling up. So let's Let's start getting a little bit bigger. I think this is the last few that I'll be doing with this round brush. I want to go to my filbert brush and start making some really big daisies. So I think I'll switch to my filbert brush now. And we'll start making some more bigger, bolder daisies. Oops, I mean, put that in the center, but it's there now. And you can just move up to a larger round brush if that is going to make it easier for you. Big nice daisies down here at the bottom. Maybe we'll just see a couple petals of that one. And if you want to go back and repeat on any of these, then you can certainly do that to make them a little bit brighter. So I'm going to come across in front of him to about here because I want to work this area down. But you can come right in here with some big bold daisies and just fill this area right up. So I'm only going to go about that far because I want to bring this side down. So I'm going to go off camera and finish this side just like I did this side. Small ones back in here really fill in with taps and dabs. A little bit bigger as you come forward. Keep getting bigger until you get right, I would say right about here. And then all of these down below his knee, about one third up on his knee and below will be the big daisies. Okay. All right, let's tap our centers in on these daisies. Aren't they so cute? And your bushy stuff back here, you can have it come up way higher than what I did. <clears throat> I really just, you know, didn't want a whole lot of stuff going on back here. Um, actually, I could have brought the, um, the ground up a little higher. That would require a lot more daisies, but they were so fast and easy. So let's tap in the center with some primary yellow. And this is where you can just do a few, you know, that maybe you can definitely tell you can see a center. Uh, back in here, we don't have to really do a whole lot back in there. 
So we're just giving a little tap of some yellow in there. You know, where you think you can see a center as you get to the more ones that are more forward, make sure you tap a little bit bright, a bigger tap of yellow in there. And you can always go back and stroke your uh, petals more than once. Um, I did not do that. I just did them one time. The only one that got two layers was the one that he is holding because I didn't want to see his beard through that. And you'll probably see a little bit of green that will come through this yellow perfectly fine. But if you don't like that coming through, then you can repeat your centers. Just a little peek of that center. And then just work your way back, back this way. And then you can just start kind of putting some here. Don't fill in the whole flower like I just did there. <laughs> That's a lot of yellow. And my daisies are white, but you can certainly make your daisies any color that you would like. All right, so I'm just going to do a few little dabs here and there. And not to worry about, you know, too much going on in the background. I don't know if you can hear our sirens going, our weather sirens going off. Today is test day. It's the day they always test them. Okay, I think I actually might repeat the one that's in his hand there. A little bit more yellow. This is primary yellow on it. And then if you want to, totally optional, you can come back in with a little bit of white. I'll put a little highlight on this one because it is the one that is more forward. And on some of these others, you can put a couple little dabs of white if you want a little highlight on them. Maybe especially the ones that are closest to you. Just a little dot or two of some snow white. And then I'm going to take a look at this and see if I want to do anything else to this. It's the center all together there. On this daisy up here, you could also highlight the tips with some white, although going on top of warm white, I'm not sure it will show up too much. But we could, oh, that's a lot of paint. We could pull a little bit of white just on the tips. And like I said, because we're going over warm white, this probably won't show up too well, but if you want your daisy to appear just a little bit brighter, the one that's in his hands, you can shade around the center as well. Um, this again is optional. Um, I think I might use a little bit of leaf green, maybe. Really work that into my brush. We've got to finish out the leaf on that flower as well. So I'm really working that into my brush, getting, getting it extremely light color. And then just come around. We won't come on this side because this side is the um, uh, edge of the petal. The front edge of those petals. But we can put a little bit of burnt umber down in here in the center and just ooh, focus starting that just a little bit those steps totally optional for you if you don't want to um, add that green you can darken that green you know use that darker green value let's finish out our leaf here so I want to take a little bit of black if I can get any left out of this puddle and mix it with my uh, green mix that I made. 
make a really dark green value and we're going to shade here at the base of the leaf coming down the stem we'll go along this edge and create a little bit of a vein we're not going to do a whole lot to this let's put a little bit of this dark up here next to the flower and um, if you want to I'll put some down by the hands as well on each side of the hands this is tiny 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 you can go to a round brush to do this I don't feel like you have to um, do it with this big brush that I'm that I'm using I might come down the left edge just a little bit this you can do use a detail brush and then we will lighten up with our leaf green and primary yellow mix. We'll make a bright green out of it. And I've got too much water in my brush here. And yeah, we'll just lighten up that edge. If you can put some on the stem, great. If you can't, no worries. And then just a little bit more of just primary yellow. Onto our leaf. Take the water edge and kind of soften it, blend it. And you can repeat the shading on your um, leaf as well. I think I will darken it just slightly. Oh, too much water. It's very easy for me to fill these little brushes up with completely full of water. A little bit more dark down here. And coming up that edge a little bit. Okay, that's going to finish off our, our flower there. I might put a little bit of yellow on the stem so we can have it popping forward a little bit more. Actually, let's shade around this flower with a very sheer color of black. And we'll give a little bit of a shadow much water. Let me try this again. I want it nice and sheer, but I don't want my brush to be filled up with water so that it spreads it out everywhere. So we'll just create a little bit of a shadow around this daisy, around the leaf, um, beside the stem here. And that will pull that a little bit forward as well. Okay. That makes that look so much better. Um, I think I might be done with this one. Let me take a look at it. Let's see, but I think that will finish up this design which I haven't titled yet. Um, I originally was going to put a rainbow back here and say be someone's rainbow but I might title it stop and smell the daisies so um, we shall see what the title becomes but this gnome is so a stinking cute and you can put him on any surface and have so much fun with him give him a completely different kind of flower to hold um, just have fun with them. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks so much for painting with me, everybody. I will see you on the next one. If you're watching on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up, like, share, and comment. I appreciate you all. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.